So once you've memorized your pattern of major and minor in terms of its steps around a chromatic clock, you can very quickly become a scale factory. You can generate any major or minor scale just by setting a root note and going for it according to the pattern. So in order to set yourself up to do so, just lay out a chromatic clock like I have. Uh, we'll lay out here our reminders of what the step patterns are. And then we're just going to pick any root note. I'm going to go for a B. Let's see how that looks on manuscript. So when I'm writing scales, I don't do any stems on my notes. We're not actually talking about rhythm, the length of the notes. We're just dealing with the height of them as far as how high or low that we sing or play or whistle them. Yeah. So I've got a B here. And then I know that I'm going to do a pattern of from my B root, I'm going to go 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1. Now the first thing that I can do is from my B, I can follow what I call the line space rule. What that means is that for an eight note scale, of which uh, major and minor uh, belong to that group, the notes will always go from space to line to space, to line, to space, all the way up until we get to eight notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now if I go accurately from a B down here, and I go eight notes in total, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, this note here should also be B because I've gone what we call a full octave. So now, because that's my root, I know that I need to go a step of two. So I'm just going to write two between these two notes. Then I do another step of two. This is to make B major. Step of one. Step of two. Step of two. Step of two. And finally, a step of one. Now let's just see what this is going to sound like. Where's my B? B. I'm going to step of two, step of two, step of one, step of two, step of two, step of two, step of one. And that's how I make the major sound based on the root note of B. Now I need to go through on my clock and make sure that I've modified any of these notes that need it to make the right step pattern. So if my root note is a B, now a regular C is only a step of one. I need to go a step of two. My note here is on a C. So I'm gonna call it C sharp, because then I've got a step of two to get there, which is what I need it. So I'm gonna rub out my two here and replace that with a sharp. So now I go B to C sharp, which is my step of two. I then need to go another step of two. So my D here is not going to cut it because that's only a step of one. I'm going to have to go to D sharp. So I'll replace that two with a sharp. Now my number here is reminding me I go a step of one. Let's look at D sharp on the clock. A step of one above it is E, and I've got the note of E, so that's fine. I can just remove that one and not do anything to that E because it's correct. I then need to go a step of two. Ah, okay, well a step of one is to F, a step of two is F sharp, and my note head's on an F, so it can't be a G flat, by the way, it's got to be an F sharp, because my note head's sitting there on an F, but I can make that sound by calling it F sharp. I'll replace that two with a sharp. I then need to do another step of two. From F sharp here, I'll go to G sharp. My note head's on a G, so yes, I can put a sharp in front of that note and make the required sound.
Right, I'm on the G sharp, note here, clock here. I need to do another step of two, G sharp to A sharp will work as a step of two and my note head's on an A so that's going to work if I sharpen it. So I'll remove that two and place a sharp. And finally I'm on A sharp, I need to get back to B with a step of one and that is happening on the clock. So the A sharp to B here is correct and I'm not going to sharpen the B. And so I have a scale of B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, which is a scale that starts on the root note B and follows the major step pattern. And those two pieces of information come into the name of the scale, which is B major. And if I play those notes on the keyboard, we can check that it sounds the way that it should. Let's now make a minor scale, and I'm going to start on the note F sharp. So I'll draw an F here, and in the notation we put the sharp symbol before the note head. So that's my F sharp. So I'm going to follow exactly the same process because F sharp minor is an eight note scale, it's going to obey the line space rule, which means I just go space, line, space, line, space, line, space, line. Because my bottom note's an F sharp, I'm going to put a sharp on my top F sharp as well. An F sharp scale, whether it is minor or major or anything else, will begin on an F sharp and end on an F sharp. And if we check our treble clef, the first space is F, which is sharpened here. And if we go up our lines, E, G, B, D, F, the top line is sharpened. So that's an F. So we can test that we're correct, that our scale goes from F sharp to F sharp. Now we're going to use the clock starting on F sharp as our root note and the minor pattern. So we go root note of F sharp, we're going to do a step of two, and our note head's on a G, so we're going to opt for G sharp. We're going to go a step of one, our note head is on an A, that's correct. Then we go a step of two to a B. Our note here is on B, so that's correct. Then we go a step of two. Ah, we have to use a C sharp. Our note here's on the C, but that's only a step of one from B. We need to do a step of two, so we're going to sharpen our C. From the C sharp, we do a step of one. So that's going to go to D here, and that's going to work. Then we do a step of two, which will go to E, and that's already on the notation. And then a step of two to F sharp, and yes, we place that right at the beginning. So we've correctly made a scale which starts on the root note F sharp and follows the minor step pattern. Therefore, it is the scale of F sharp minor. And one last major scale for this video. We're going to do F major. So I go to the stave and place an F. Obeying the line space rule, I create eight notes each one, one manuscript step higher than the previous one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I then look at the major pattern, and just again to remind myself, I'm going to write it in here, root, two, two, one, two, 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 one. 
So let's start on an F. Actually, I'll get an F so I can hum it as I do it. Do oh, that's an F. We're going to go 2 to a G, so that's correct. I'll just remove that 2. We go 2 to an A, that's correct. So I'll remove that 2. Now, from the A, I need to go a step of 1. Do I go to the A sharp or do I go to the B flat? Well, to answer that question, look at where the note head is. The note head's on a B. So we're going to, for our step of 1 above the note of A, we're going to go to the B flat because that's where our note head is. So that's where the line space rule helps us decide whether to use flats or sharps. Because we cannot have A and then A sharp in a major scale because each note has got to rise one step on the manuscript. We've already used the note position A, so our next note must be B flat, not A sharp. And that's why we have the two names, sharps and flats, for the same sounds. So we're on our B flat, we need to do a step of 2 to the C, that's already there. We do a step of 2 to the D, that's there. We do a step of 2 to the E, that's there. And then we do a step of 1 to the F. So for our scale of F major, we only had to add one flat, which was flattening the B, and then we made a successful scale that begins and ends on F and follows the major step pattern of root 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1. It obeys the line space rule by smoothly moving up the manuscript and thus it is a correct F major scale.